So I'm up at the barn and I've just delivered what I hope is my last set of barrels full of water. We've got these uh, stock tanks here. Um, throughout winter, uh, no problem filling them up with the rain. Uh, but we've had a pretty dry summer and Moosey, stop chasing the goats. Um, I've been carrying water up here every day or two. We've got sheep and goats on this side and the cows are over on the other side. Cows definitely drink a lot of water. So my plan is to run a trench and an irrigation line today. Our irrigation system is fed by that pond back there and runs through a pump in this pump house up to the irrigation lines out in the pastures. I was up in the pasture looking to add another pump further upstream to supply water to the barn, um, but I wasn't getting any pressure. I realized that there was no pressure at all in the irrigation system. So I've come down here to try and work out what's going on. So what we see in here is there's the pump taking water out of the pond. There's a pressure switch, pressure gauge, pressure valve, and the line that goes up to um, the fields. I've got that turned off. Um, so we can just isolate the problem as to what's going on here. So if you can see down here, um, the pressure gauge is currently reading like 15 PSI, usually sits around 70 PSI. And when I came down here to see what was going on, the pump had been running continuously. This entire pump house was really hot. Um, there was a lizard living in here, a bunch of ants. It's amazing all the ants have cleared out pretty quick. Um, but it was really warm in here, letting me think that the pump had been running for a while. Um, if I sort of manually activate the pressure switch, no pressure rises in the pump, in the pressure tank. It sort of just sits there at 15 psi. Um, so that tells me either the pump is dead, um, or it's not getting water from the pond. Um, I've undone this coupling here, and I'll do it again now if I can, one-handed. Here we go. And there should be a check valve between here and the pressure tank. So, yeah, there's water. Which way is it coming out? There's water coming out from both ways. Both from the pressure tank and from the pump. But when I run the pump, that flow doesn't increase appreciably. My expectation is that if that pump was running and that coupling was open, that water would spurt out. So water is not coming out of the pump. So either the pump's bad or the inlet line um, coming from the pond is clogged. So I've tried clearing this out a little bit. So the water comes into the pond or into the pump over this uh, pipe. There's another pipe lying here, uh, which lets me think that this has gotten clogged before. It might be blocked. All there is at the end of this pipe, I don't know if I can lift it up one-handed, is just a bucket at the end with some holes drilled through it to stop the pond scum from growing in. But I think hopefully it's just uh, this pipe is blocked and I can replace the pipe. If not, there might be a problem with the pump. So um, I tried undoing this. I'll try again, but if not, I might just cut this pipe and see if I'm getting suction on this end um, with the pump running. If so, then this pipe is blocked. We'll see. So I cut the pipe off, um, and this little basket filter on the end is clear. Um, water flows freely through the pipe. Um, so I'm not sure what's wrong. Let's see if I can run the pump and see if there's any suction on this side. Um, it's going to be hard to do that. My arms aren't long enough to reach uh, inside. Maybe I can use the camera to see if there's suction on the bucket here um, while I run the pump.
pump has no suction. I wonder if this pump needs to be primed. I wonder if that was the problem. Um, I wonder if that's what this port here is for. Let's see if I can prime the pump. I opened up uh, that little port there and filled it with water. There's a check valve at the bottom of this pipe, so I was able to fill it up to there. Um, hoping that would prime the pump and get it to work, but that didn't work, so I think there's another option. If I can open up that guy there at the top, um, maybe I can pour water directly into the pump. The guy's pretty frozen solid, but I've got a big cheetah bar, so I should be able to open that up. I don't know if you saw that. Um, <clears throat> yep. Well, after breaking the wrench and having three other consecutive plumbing issues to deal with today, I decided to call a professional. Um, see if the, bump, the pump got burnt out, maybe um, while it was just running. Um, not building pressure, um, not being primed. I don't know why the low pressure valve sort of switch didn't turn it off. But anyway, professional's on his way, and uh, hopefully I'll learn a thing or two from him. Is it moving? What's that? Is it moving? No. I'm just trying to break the rust on it. But yeah. I said it doesn't look like he used any cap on tape or anything on it when he put it in there. Yeah. I mean, it would be nice if he left a ball valve or something so he could reprime it. Yeah, exactly. That sounds empty. The verdict is that the pump is not creating suction. Um, so we're gonna replace it. Uh, I might go take the old pump down to the shop, take it apart and see if we can work out what actually caused it to fail. So I extracted the old broken motor and pump. The motor itself is fine. It's one and a half horsepower, 240 volts. I'll probably keep that for useful stuff around the shop. Um, we replaced the pump and motor with uh, a new motor and a double impeller section pump, so a two-stage pump that gets us up to the uh, 90 psi. Luckily these bolts are coming out pretty easily. I think it would be interesting to take a look inside here and see if we can work out why this thing is not pumping. So water comes in through here, there is, looks like there's impeller veins in there, but really is that the entire thickness of the impeller that sends the water out through here? That seems pretty small, let's see if we can get this off. Alright, I think I got it.
So I think that's all there is to the Impeller. It's pretty small. Huh. All right. And okay. So this just directs the water. I guess. Oh, this is probably why I wasn't pulling any suction. I don't know why I smelled that. It stinks. Looks like that was really the only problem. I mean, it's corroded to hell. And it has a lot of hard buildup. But yeah, it looks like it was just full of junk. Oh, double. Another impeller. Huh. Some more section on the back there. It kind of makes sense. I was expecting um, that if this was just the problem that we could have repaired it rather than having to replace it with a new one. Um, but either way, that's good to know. I've got spares here and a working a one and a half horse motor um, that I'll be able to use for something in the future. Um, surprised at how small these guys are. I was expecting them to be larger. As I said, this unit built up uh, 65 psi. Uh, the new unit built up uh, 90 psi and gets water out to the barn. Um, here's the front end section that I pulled off at the start. Also full of crud. It smells quite bad. All right, so that's what's inside this pump. The professional has come and uh, delivered our brand new double impeller pump um, here it is it's also a new one and a half horse motor um, you can see it has a much larger impeller section up there it's currently sitting at 80 psi um, whereas the old one was sitting at 60 um, it should get up to 90 uh, with this setup uh, but that should uh, remove the need for, for doing a booster pump which is my original plan halfway along the line and this should give us enough pressure to get water all the way up to the barn. So what I was planning on doing um, just before the old pump died was uh, installing a booster pump halfway up the the hill and um, hooking it up to the barn. Now theoretically we don't need a, a booster pump at 90 psi we should have about 200 foot ahead um, that'll make it all the way up the hill. Um, last summer I ran um, nearly a thousand feet of PEX, uh, one inch PEX uh, in trenches that goes up to the barn. Um, what I need to do now is um, go test this out, see if we get water up the barn, and if we do, uh, plumb it all. Um, get some faucets up there and see if I can find a way to hook it all up to the uh, rain catchment tank that we already have. But first, I've got to get our water dog to come out of the water. Moosey, he used to hate getting wet. He loves it. I think ever since he got sprayed by a skunk, he's discovered the joy of getting a nice good bath. Well, I don't really consider this water to be super clean, but hey, better than nothing, right? You guys thirsty? <laughs> That's awesome. You like that? I'm down in one of the lower pastures at a pond that we have here. And it's not quite a fully seasonal pond in that I don't think it completely dries out in summer, but you can see that's where the water line is um, in the winter and that little hill there is an island right now. It's only not even August and the water level is pretty low. It's convenient having this pond here. Um, the cows obviously like spending a lot of time here, but given the way that we want to rotate animals uh, between pastures to really take care of them properly, um, we can't keep the cows on this pond forever. And this pond is drying out. Um, it's fed by a little spring that comes out up here that's fenced into an or cross fenced into another pasture. Um, but this spring is drying out. If we go up here, we're just getting drips. Yeah. 
two days ago this box was full and there was maybe half a gallon or a quarter of a gallon a minute coming out a couple of days later this is what it looks like so i'm going to be going dry here pretty soon so i think it's time to hook some pvc up to that pex sticking out of the ground and get the barn all plumbed up and give us a lot more options for keeping these animals watered throughout the summer it's a gorgeous morning Okay, so this will connect to the PEX um, coming out of the ground, uh, which pumps the water up from the pond about, um, I don't know, a quarter of a mile away and about 500 feet downhill. Um, I want to be able to turn that off completely. So this ball valve, ah, this ball valve is stuck. There we go. That'll allow me to turn that on and off completely. I'm also going to have a T after this. That goes out to a three quarter reducer, which allows me to redirect the input to come from a water pump from my rain tank. Um, so in summer, I can be running from the pump. Uh, I'll winterize that, turn that off in winter. If I occasionally need water in winter when it's not freezing, I can manually allow water to come in through this three-quarter line here. So that will go there to there. And after this, we'll go out and feed the um, hose bibs. Should be pretty straightforward. Famous last word, right? right. I cut this electrical conduit, I think it's uh, two inch. Um, it's act as a sleeve, so just basically protect the pecs from sunlight. Um, I dug down a little bit, so I can attach this guy and slide that up and bring the dirt back up and hopefully that'll just protect it from UV. Um, I don't know why I made this guy come off in this direction when the water tank is in that direction, but so be it. That's not too hard to fix. Should I cut this a little shorter? Yeah, I think I should. Alright. Please don't fall down that tube. Of course that means it'll fall down the tube. Now this guy's broken, the release doesn't work so great, but hopefully I can get it to work now. <laughs> All right, and that's on tight. Strap that to the wall. Let's do that. So I'm doing all of this in schedule 40. Um, but honestly, my hope was to do it in schedule 80, not because of the pressure, but 
rather because the goats, which can um, be pretty violent when it comes to things they like to rub against. I might have to build a barrier around this. I'm gonna get some longer screws. my point about demolishing things. Let's see if this plywood will help shim it up. Perfect. Guys, you're in the way. Maybe some loud noises will stay off. Uh, plywood probably isn't the best for outdoor use. But we're on the north side of the barn here, and it's only just to make a temporary sort of shim. And there is an actual structural member behind here. Just lucky. The more straps I use, the less likely it is for goats to damage this. So I'm just going to dry fit this to get everything lined up. I kind of wanted to have a, a downward slope um, so that when I winterize the water doesn't pool uh, for reasons. Good thing I stopped to have a bit of a stare and a think. Uh, I actually wanted to have a faucet here so put a T in there that reduces to three quarters, use some three quarter line to this threaded elbow and this one down here. It's not going to secure it all, but let me put this, these pieces together um, and come insert that here. It looks needlessly complicated, but it's probably good. Let's keep on working my way down the line.
Hey guys, what's up? Uh, Hi. Uh, I'm over here. Uh, guys. So, this should be the moment of truth. This was as high as the water would get with the old pump. Well, a couple of feet above here. But I have a hose here that goes up the driveway. Well, really four hoses. Um, I have a mini excavator. And a bunch of tansy here I need to clear out. I didn't see this. I'll get that tomorrow. Anyway, I'm going to trench out here and run some more pecs. But for now, I've got about 200 feet of hose um, that meets up with the pecs that I've already put in the ground. In my test yesterday, um, I had this same setup, but I didn't have all the plumbing done yet at the barn it was just sort of the peck sticking out of the ground water came out um, didn't come out immediately I forgot water takes time to travel and so I drove up to the barn after turning that faucet on and didn't see any water coming out and was kind of disappointed um, I sort of stuck my ear next to the pipe to see if I could hear anything and there was this gurgling and this blooping sound a blooping sound yes um, and uh, why am I walking? I can drive. And some brown, thick, muddy water came out. And after that, clear water came out. And that was a pretty good moment. So that gave you confidence to go do all the plumbing that I think you just saw. So I'm going to drive up to the barn and see if we have water. Here's where the water, ha! The hose meets the, the pipe. I guess that hose is leaking a bit. Oh well, that can be improved upon obviously, but if we're still getting water up the barn with that leak there and that small diameter hose, that's a good sign. All right, let's make our way up to the barn. So if I turn this valve here, that sounded good. I can hear water. Should probably get out of the way. Sure, it may have been the Romans who uh, mastered aqueducts, but a few thousand years later, I'm pretty happy with this setup. Last year, I was filling all these stock tanks around the barn uh, with barrels of water. Now, not only do I have plumbing up here, I've got an automatic tank filler. Um, I'll keep these tanks full, 
keep the animals happy. Project's not completely done. I still have to plumb in um, the rain storage tank via that little pump up there. That'll go into that three quarter line there. Um, need to more securely mount the hose bibs to the timber and need to uh, replace that hose that's down the bottom of the hill with another trench and um, some buried pecs. I'll probably wait until winter to do the trenching. The soil's pretty hard already um, this time of year. Um, so we'll survive for another couple of months on this setup. But I'm real happy, unreasonably happy. Um, the neighbors keep on stopping by to check on progress with this project. It's been a while in the coming. Um, I'm glad to say it's now done. Couldn't have happened on a prettier day.